from Wikipedia, Kent State Anniversary. From Wikipedia, Kent State Shootings. The Kent State Shooting, also known as the May 4th Massacre and the Kent State Massacre, were the killing of four and wounding of nine unarmed college students by the Ohio National Guard on the Kent State University campus. The shootings took place on May 4, 1970, during a rally opposing the expanding involvement of the Vietnam War into Cambodia by United States military forces as well as protesting the National Guard presence on campus and the draft. Kent State Shootings Mary Ann Vecchio kneeling over the dead body of Jeffrey Miller minutes after the unarmed student was fatally shot by an Ohio National Guardsman. Location Kent State University, Kent, Ohio, United States Date, May 4, 1970, 54 years ago, 12.24 p.m., Eastern Daylight Time, UTC-4, Attack Type, Mass Shooting, Deaths, 4, Injured, 9, Victims, Kent State University Students, Perpetrators, Companies, A, and C-1 145th Infantry and Troop G of the 2 107th Armored Cavalry of the Ohio National Guard. Accused of the atrocity, Lawrence Schaefer, James McGee, James Pierce, William Perkins, Ralph Zoller, Barry Morris, Leon H. Smith, Matthew J. McManus, Verdict, Not Guilty, Charges, Deprivation of Rights Under Color of Law, Not Guilty, Judge, Frank J. Battisti, May 4, 1970, Kent State Shooting Site, U.S., National Register of Historic Places, U.S., National Historic Landmark, Kent State Shootings is located in Ohio Kent State Shootings, location, 0.5 miles, SE of the intersection of E, Main Street and S, Lincoln Street, Kent, Ohio. 28 National Guard soldiers fired about 67 rounds over 13 seconds, killing four students and wounding nine others, one of whom suffered permanent paralysis, victims. Students Allison Krause, 19, Jeffrey Glenn Miller, 20, and Sandra Lee Scheuer, 20, died on the scene, while William Knox Schroeder, 19, was pronounced dead at Robinson Memorial Hospital in nearby Ravenna shortly afterward. Krause and Miller were among the more than 300 students who gathered to protest the expansion of the Cambodian campaign, which President Richard Nixon had announced in an April 30th television address. Scheuer and Schroeder were in the crowd of several hundred others who had been observing the proceedings more than 300 feet from the firing line, like most observers, they watched the protest during a break between their classes. The shootings triggered immediate and massive outrage on campuses around the country. It increased participation in the student strike that began on May 1st. Ultimately, more than 4 million students participated in organized walkouts at hundreds of universities, colleges, and high schools. The shootings and the strike affected public opinion at an already socially contentious time over the role of the United States in the Vietnam War. Eight of the shooters were charged with depriving the students of their civil rights, but were acquitted in a bench trial. <sighs> The trial judge stated, it is vital that state and National Guard officials not regard this decision as authorizing or approving the use of force against demonstrators, whatever the occasion of the issue involved. Such use of force is, and was, deplorable. Okay, the names of the victims. I'm Cyril, and I'm going to list the names of the victims that I have here on Wikipedia. Unfortunately, the article on AI didn't quite, uh, wasn't quite um, thorough with it, but here we go. This is from Wikipedia, and feel free to correct or, um, or um, you know what happened, you know. Um, sometimes the information is not always accurate. That's not my fault. I'm doing my best to make it as accurate as possible, but this is from Wikipedia, which is a more peer-oriented source, probably less biased than most, than many uh, articles in the uh, corporate media about this. Some of them even have the audacity to blame the victims and blame the protesters and the students. Um, <clears throat> killed an approximate distance from the National Guard. Jeffrey Glenn Miller, 265 feet, 
through the mouth, killed instantly. Alice and Beth Kraus, Kraus, and AI pronounced it wrong. I think it's Alice and Beth Kraus. 340 feet, fatal left chest wound, dead on arrival. William Knox Schroeder, 300 and 382 feet, a fatal chest wound, died almost an hour later in a local hospital while undergoing surgery. Goodness. He was a member of the campus ROTC battalion. Sandra Lee Schauer, excuse me for mispronouncing the name, 390 feet, fatal neck wound, died a few minutes later from loss of blood. Bless their hearts. Wounded an approximate distance from the National Guard. This is a little bit of a longer list. Um, Joseph Lewis Jr., 71 feet away, hit twice, once in his right abdomen, once in his lower left leg. John R. Cleary, 100 feet, upper left chest wound. Thomas Mark Grace, 225 feet, hit in his left ankle. Alan Michael Canfora, hit in his right wrist, 225 feet away. Dean R. Collar, back wound, 258 feet away. Back wound, fracturing the vertebrae, permanently paralyzed from the chest down. Oh my God, I feel the pain. I do. Douglas Allen Rentmore, um, 209, 300 and, 329 feet. I'm getting dyslexic. 329 feet, hit in his right knee. James Dennis Russell, uh, 375 feet, hit in his right thigh from a bullet and grazed on his right forehead by either a bullet or bird shot. Both wounds, minor, no less valid, wounded near the Memorial Gymnasium, away from most of the other students. Ooh, that doesn't matter. A miss, a miss is as good as a mile, and so is a hit. Robert Fuller's stamps, 495 feet, hit in his right buttock, still no less valid. Donald Scott McKenzie, 750 feet, neck wound. Of those shot, none was closer than 71 feet to the guardsmen. Of those killed, the nearest, Miller, was 265 feet away. Their average distance from the guardsmen was 300 and 345 feet. The victim furthest from the guard was 750 feet away. So, um... I want to have a vigil right now of a minute to remember those people and to also remember those that were emotionally traumatized I'm super, I'm sure we all were emotion they were all emotionally traumatized I get emotionally traumatized every May 4th when I uh, have to remember this again but a little bit of emotional traumatization a year for me is pale compared to what you all they all went through um Many people don't know how Devo was founded. The band Devo was founded. Um, and many people, um, they could care less, or they it's not important to them, it's not very consequential to them. But it's consequential to me. I get curious about every favorite band I uh, come across, every favorite band I acquire in my life. Um, I was 13 years old when I became aware of Devo, their famous song, Whip It, on the radio. And we gotta whip it good. You know, we've gotta whip this good. Um, no war, uh, no violence unless as a last resort to defend ourselves. And I'm not talking about the U.S. defend, U.S. allegedly defending against other countries that, um, that we don't, whose policies we don't, we don't like as Amer Americans, the citizenry and the government. I don't like our policies either. I'm an American. I was born in Missouri. I don't like our policies either. I don't like our policies. Um, thinking we have to automatically wage war if we don't agree with the way a country does things. Now, I don't support um, Pol Pot. I don't support um, Stalinism or Maoism, but I am a democratic socialist. Um, being a socialist doesn't mean we have to be violent. And again, when, if we support any political or economic system, or, or none, if we have to defend ourselves, but not 
you know, creating an offense or getting defensive every time we don't agree on something. Um, now, um, it is our God-given and our, should be our legal-given right to protest something we don't like. Have peaceful protests, but to attack in cold blood and lives lost, that's wrong. <clears throat> and uh, limb and, limb and uh, well-being and health lost, that's wrong too. And um, I, I, I try to, I do my level best to have a kind attitude toward all of humanity, including the perpetrators. But I don't support what they've done to these people. I don't support the psychological, emotional trauma that was inflicted against Jerry Casale and company and his loved ones <coughs> and anyone else involved. So, one minute of silence right now. And I live in, a, in an apartment. There's noise in the background, but I'm going to be silent for a minute. Sixty. Thank you, everyone, for sharing this with me. I know it's not easy to hear, but it's a lot harder to, um, in the long run, to hide from it and deny it and run away from it and have something blow up later on. Um, I think deep in our hearts we know what's right and what's wrong, and this is wrong. Lives were lost needlessly, and limb was lost needlessly, because um, some soldiers didn't like some policemen, police officers didn't like what, you know, we were disagreeing on. All right, rest in peace, the ones who died, and peace and well-being to the ones that survived, including Jerry Casale. Not just a rock. You're not a rock band, Jerry. You're a rock star. You survived terrible trauma.